Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Tree of Life. As we continue our, our worship during the season of Epiphany, one of the recurring themes is that Christ is the world's light. He's a light that gives us hope in this world of darkness, and that's going to be the focus of our service here today. Uh, the service is all printed out for you in our service folder. We'll begin with the opening hymn, Christ is the World's Light. Uh, and, but before we do that, take a moment to greet those that are going to be worshiping around you here today. God bless our worship. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. Yes. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. In Christ and through faith in him we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. In repentant faith we come before our Lord in confession. Almighty God, King of all, we confess to you that we are sinful by nature. We have lived in darkness rather than light. Our selfish thoughts, harmful words, and faithless actions reveal our sinfulness. But for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who became flesh for us, we pray, forgive us our sins. Amen. God's grace is revealed in the birth 
life, suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He has brought light to this world darkened by sin. In the place of and by the command of Jesus, I announce the full forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Son to proclaim your kingdom and to teach with authority. Anoint us with the power of your spirit that we too may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, beginning with the first verse. This will serve as our base, the basis for our sermon. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. This is God's word. We join in our song response, Shine, Jesus, shine. One thing just to note that the refrain is on page 8 on the other side. Shine, Jesus, shine. Oh, my 
The light of Christ's love not only shines on us, but it shines through us as we live out our lives of faith. A lesson from 1 John chapter 2. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light, and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. This is God's word. We join in singing our verse of the day. for this Sunday is taken from Matthew chapter 4, beginning with the 12th verse. Here we see Jesus, the light of the world, shine through his preaching and teaching. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake where they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nuts and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. This is the gospel of our risen King. We join in the confession of faith. It is necessary for eternal salvation truly to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ also took on human flesh. Now this is the true Christian faith. We believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, is both God and man. He is God, eternally begotten from the nature of the Father, and he is man, born in time from the nature of his mother, fully God, fully man, with rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father as to his deity, less than the Father as to his humanity. And though he is both God and man, Christ is not two persons, but one. One, not by changing the deity into flesh, 
but by taking the humanity into God. One indeed, not by mixture of the natures, but by unity in one person. For just as the rational soul and flesh are one human being, so God and man are one Christ. He suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose the third day from the dead, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from there will come to judge the living and the dead. This is the true Christian faith. Whoever does not faithfully and firmly believe this cannot be saved. You may be seated and the children are invited to come forward for the children's message. How are you, sir? Hello. 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 You're wearing a dress still. No, I'm not. Hey, I got a question for you. You know, everything up here, there's a reason and a purpose for doing it. You know, this this thing over here, what do we, what do we use this for? What do I use this for? Yeah, yeah the, the baptismal font, we baptize it. And, and we also use it for preaching too, right? Right? What about, what about the candles? Well, that's a hard one. Why do we have, yeah. <laughs> Why do we have candles? I mean, don't, could, do you think we could still see if we didn't have these candles on the altar here? Could we still see? I mean, this is pretty bright, isn't it? Doesn't that give us enough light to see? So why do we like candles? Doesn't that seem... So we can see. So we can see, okay. So... What do the candles... Do the candles remind... The candles remind us of something. That's why we like the candles. They remind us of who is the light of the world. God. Jesus. Jesus is. Yeah, Jesus is the light of the world. And he shines. He shows himself to us. He reveals us so we can see him and who he is and what he has done for us. How does Jesus shine? How does he shine? How do we get to see Jesus? We read the Bible. Yeah, we read the Bible. When we die and go to heaven. When we die and go to heaven. Yeah, well, then we'll get to see him for sure, right? Right, yeah. But we read the Bible, and, and he shines in our baptisms. He shines as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. He shines through his word and sacrament and shows us who he is and what he has done. And the greatest thing that Jesus did for you and me, the best gift that he's revealed to your hearts and, and mine, is that he's forgiven how much of our sins? All of it. All of them. Not a single sin is on you anymore. Jesus has paid for them all in full. And so where do we get to go? Heaven. All right, let's fold our hands and thank Jesus for being the light of the world to shine, okay? <clears throat> Dear Jesus, thank you so much for shining in my life and showing me who you are, that you're my Savior, that you love me, and, and that you adopted me as your dear child and will take me to heaven to be with you forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, good job. You guys can go sit back down with your parents. And we'll continue with our hymn of the day, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
grace, his mercy, and peace be yours in abundance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The words for our consideration today are taken from Isaiah chapter 9, beginning with the first verse. Please bow your heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our light and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Dear Christian friends, anybody know who that is? Yeah, yeah. Anybody know her name? Gabby Giffords. Gabby Giffords. Gabrielle Giffords, yes. Gabrielle Giffords, this is Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords from Arizona. On January 8th, just about two weeks ago, uh, she was shot in the head while she was visiting with some of her constituents. Uh, the, the accused gunman, Jared Loeffner, opened fire on the crowd, killing six and injuring 13, in, including, including uh, Congresswoman woman Giffords. Thankfully, the doctors and her family have said that there are some signs of hope. Her husband has gone on to talk to reporters and said just some, some of the little things that she does. She, she's played with his wedding ring, which was something that she used to do. She's given him a, a nice little neck massage, you know, thinking of him when she's in the shape she's at. Uh, and amazingly enough, two days ago, I think it was, she actually stood up and walked on her own two feet. Two, day, two weeks after being shot in the head. Uh, I, some signs of hope. Um, that her husband had told reporters, I'm extremely hopeful at the signs of recovery that my wife has made since the shooting. Hope. Now, one can't imagine how dark and difficult these days are right now for the Gifford family, can it? Well, we, one can't even imagine. But, but even in their darkest hour, they've seen a little ray of comfort. They, they've seen a light of hope that she might recover. The children of Israel were looking at some pretty darkened days as well. Days where the nation was in spiritual decay and, and it was looking pretty bleak for the faithful. But God gave them a ray of hope, a, a light of hope to shine when those darkened days would come. And that's what we're going to look at here this morning. The author of Kings tells us how bad of shape the country was in. He said, under the time, at the time under the reign of King Ahaz, the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God who had brought them up out of Egypt. They worshipped other gods and followed the practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before him. They set up sacred stones and Asherah poles on every high hill. At every high place they burned incense as the nations before them had done. They did wicked things that provoked the Lord to anger. They worshipped idols, though the Lord had told them not to. They forsook the commands of the Lord their God and made for themselves idols cast in the shape of calves. They bowed down to all the starry hosts and worshipped Baal. They sacrificed their sons and daughters in fire. They practiced sorcery and did evil in the eyes of the Lord, provoking him to anger. I think things are bad now. Despite the Lord's patience and the prophet's warning, the, wor the, words of the, the word of God fell upon dull ears. The children of Israel continued to be disobedient and defiant in, in their actions. And so God told Isaiah that because of their hard hearts and their stiff necks, he was going to allow the Assyrian army to cast a shadow of captivity on his people. Have you ever heard someone say, I just can't believe in a God that would allow so many bad things to go on? Why? Why would God darken this world? Why, why would he allow the darkness to, to overtake the world? Why? Why is there so much suffering? Why so much tragedy? Why? Why? Those were the six people that were killed in the tragic events up in Arizona. Why would God allow that? She's so young. Got her whole life ahead of her. 
He was someone's husband, someone's brother, someone's loved one, someone's grandmother. Why? Maybe a little bit closer to home. Why does God allow darkness to come into my days? Why? I, we sang in our hymn of the day, I want to walk as a child of the light. I don't want to be in the darkness, but yet darkness comes in my life. My family's felt the sting of death. My relatives have gotten diseases and illnesses. Why? Is there any hope? Do you think there's people out there that are wondering that? Is there something more to hope for? A few years ago, there were some scientists that did some research on some children that they found with a genetic defect. These children uh, didn't produce a chemical in their body that sent messages, messages uh, up from their, their limbs up to their brain to let them know that they were in pain. So the kids were accidentally burning themselves with hot liquids uh, or, or with steam or uh, breaking bones and they didn't, they didn't know that their arm was broken because they couldn't feel it. Uh, the kids accidentally bit through their lips with their teeth. They bit off parts of their tongue because they couldn't feel that anything was wrong. The pain, we think sometimes, oh, I, I wish that we didn't have to deal with pain. But the pain actually prevented them from realizing that they had a problem, that they had a broken bone, that they were bleeding. And the pain actually would have helped in that situation. Now we, of course, wish pain, disaster, disease, darkness, keep it away from my life. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I don't want it in my life at all. We pray that God would do that. We often have come to his altar and, and brought people that are going through some dark days in our prayers. But the comforting fact as we go through God's word as we hear what he promises is that even that darkness, even something that the devil tries to use to cloud our faith, God uses it to direct our faith back to him. Pain and disaster and tragedy, they remind us that we're not living in a perfect world. They remind us that we're not home yet. They remind us of our own frailty our own weaknesses. They remind us that we're sinful beings in need of a savior. And that's exactly what God shows us in these dark days. He gives us a reason to hope, a reason to look forward to something better that's coming our way. And he did that for the children of Israel as well. The worst of the, the attacks when the captivity would come. This is the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, and and uh, the worst of the attacks came from the north. This, for many, many years, was basically a, a, uh, a doormat for enemy invading nations. They constantly would come in to the north up here, infiltrate this, and, and, and lead the people astray, and, and, and cause all sorts of disruption. This, this area got the worst of it. But in our lesson, we hear that the area where the, dark, the days were the darkest would be the place where the light would shine the brightest. Our lesson tells us, nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan River. Anybody know what body of water that is? Take a guess. Sea of Galilee. There's the Jordan River. The people living in darkness, walking in darkness, have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has come. God says, <laughs> there are brighter days coming for you my children. Even though you might not be able to see them right now. There are better things coming down the road. 
There are days when you're going to see a light that will shine and, and cast away all gloom, doom, and darkness. Just as when the sun rises and attacks the night. There's going to be a time when the light will be so great that people will rejoice at the harvest, as, as at the harvest. As men rejoice when dividing plunder from it, capturing an enemy nation. It will be as in the day of Midian's defeat. Anybody remember what happened at Midian? God delivered the Israelites an awesome miracle. Every Israelite would have known exactly what was going on at Midian. 500 years before this was written, something awesome took place. Does that picture help give you a This is Gideon's leading of the 300 men and beating the Midianites, the impossible victory. Gideon and the 100 men with him reached the edge of the camps, uh, the camp at, at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed the guard. They blew trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew their trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left, and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow, they shouted, A sword from the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. <coughs> Israelites didn't even have to swing a sword. And the Lord delivered to them this impossible victory, seemingly impossible victory. And God says in Isaiah, it's going to be just like that. A light that will come and bring a victory for you. Children of the light, we have seen the promise fulfilled. We have seen the light that has come. The same area that was relentlessly trotted up by the foot of enemy so feet of enemy enemy soldiers bringing gloom and doom and destruction and death and disaster this same area would be where the son of god would walk and preach and do his ministry for the world to see this would be the same area where the son of god would reveal himself to be our savior from sin from darkness and death we heard in our gospel earlier, leaving Nazareth, Jesus went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali. Zebulun and Naphtali. To fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. An area that at one time was so dimmed with despair was now illumined by the light of the world. An area of the world that had once heard so many, so many cries from saddened souls got to hear the Son of God preach. Got to hear the very words come out of his mouth. An area, a land that had, had gone through so much had been worn out by war, got to see the greatest battle ever take place. They got to see Jesus' victory over sin and death. They got to see the Son of God rise triumphant from the grave, proving that his promises to us are true, that the forgiveness of sins that he offers and gives is for real. Look at Jesus shine. Look as he shines through his word and sacraments. What, what he says he's done for you. The light of the world to lead you to your home in heaven. As we go through our dark days, some of you might even be going through some of them now. There's a light of hope. There's a light that assures us that, that things are going to get better. That things will be okay. And so when our families are plagued with disease or death stings our life, well, remember the words of the Apostle Paul. As he said to the Thessalonians, we do not want you to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Thanks be to God, our hope isn't for just what's going on tomorrow, but for the world that is to come, the world where God himself promises we will have everlasting peace. Where we will see the fulfillment of hope, where he will wipe every tear from our eyes, one where there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. May the light of Jesus' love and the forgiveness of sins that he offers and gives continue to shine before your eyes of faith as you look with hopeful eyes to your home in heaven. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, our ushers will be handing out our friendship registers. We ask that you please sign those. And anybody worshiping with us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book. After that, we have the opportunity to bring an offering of thanks to the Lord. stand for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we will be praying for Heather Sevier and her family. Uh, earlier this morning, her mom was called home to eternal glory. Uh, we'll also be praying for Mary Stockdell, a friend of Patty Johnson, who just had a, a double lung transplant, and also Joe uh, Balistreri, uh, Pat Stolpa's father. He's been hospitalized again, is, and uh, it, it's looking like the Lord's going to be calling him home soon, too. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, in the fullness of time you came into our world to save us from sin and death. You ushered in the day of grace so long foretold. Beloved Son of the Father, revered by the Magi, baptized by John, you came preaching and teaching, healing and comforting, forgiving and encouraging. You brought the light of life to those walking in darkness and the joy of salvation to those doomed to death. Prince of Peace, shine like a beacon for us and the people of our world. Let the good news of salvation be heard in the remotest corners of the earth. Open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or hope. Arouse us and our missionaries to flood the world with the light of your gospel. Lord of the Church, let your peace rule our hearts 
that we may use our gifts to serve you and each other in willing gratitude and joy. Watch over our loved ones near and far, that they may remember your love and rejoice in your salvation. Strengthen the faith of the sick and the disheartened. Give hope to those in despair and comfort those who mourn. Be gracious to all and lead us to reflect your love in everything we say and do. Heavenly Father, please be with our sister in the faith, Heather Sevier, and her family as they mourn the loss of, their, of her mother. Thank you for the wonderful blessing that Yolanda was to her friends and family and to this world as she continued to allow the light of your love to shine in our hearts as she instructed her kids in the truth of, truth of faith and as she lived out her life as a witness for you. We don't mourn for her because we know where she is now, that she's in a better place with you and we entrust her into your care and thank you for all the blessings that she was to us. Heavenly Father, Lord of the Church, we also ask that you be with Joe Ballesteri, Pat Stolpa's father, as he's been hospitalized. Continue to be with the doctors and nurses who will be watching over him and caring for him. Uh, and in this dark times, Lord, uh, let the light of your love shine for Joe and for, for everyone around him to see of the forgiveness of sins and what we have to hope for. Holy Physician, we also ask that you be with Mary Stockdell, uh, as she continues to recover from her surgery. Uh, please watch over Mary and her family and, and guide the nurses and doctors who will be watching over her and caring for her. Uh, let her see, Lord, that in this time of uh, distress, that, Lord, you have everything in your hands and under your power, and you will do what you uh, see fit uh, to restore her health. And if it be your will, Lord, do it uh, quickly uh, and safely. Hear us, Lord, also as we bring you our private petitions. Finally, bring us and all your believers to the heavenly home where we will stand in the full light of your glory and with all your saints and angels sing the everlasting song of triumph. All this we sum up in, with the, the words our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our God generously comes to us with forgiveness and very tangible means as we participate in Holy Communion. Because the Bible has convinced us that Jesus' body and blood are truly present in the Lord's Supper, and that receiving this sacrament together is a public statement of complete oneness in our beliefs, we now invite to the Lord's Supper members of this congregation and other wells and ELS churches. We don't want to be presumptuous and put you in the position of stating your agreement with our convictions before we've had an opportunity to explain them. May the Lord be with you always. that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lived among us as a human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all your saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. and come forward at the direction of our ushers. <coughs> Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Heart in peace, your sins are forgiven. Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given into death and for forgiveness. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. 
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins take and eat this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ take and drink given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins Jesus Christ shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins take and drink this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Stand and join in giving thanks using the words of the Song of Simeon, found on page 17.
Christ child. Light the way through your word and sacrament that we too may see our Savior and worship him. Jesus Christ, light of the world, continue to burn brightly for our eyes of faith to see the forgiveness we have through your sacrifice and the home in heaven that you have won for us. Holy Spirit, continue to let our faith shine in everything we say and do so that others may come to know the love of the forgiveness that is theirs through faith in Jesus. We ask all this in our Savior's name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you all here today. Glad you could make it. A uh, couple things just to, there, that are not in the announcements. Uh, one, uh, Carlene placed all the cleaning lists in, uh, in the mailboxes, so uh, you can pick up and find out your cleaning schedule. Uh, if you would uh, like to sign up for more or less, just talk to Carlene. Um, also, Saturday, March 5th, and uh, for, we will be gathering for a potluck and talent show uh, here on Saturday, March 5th. Um, so put that on your calendars so if you you can juggle or break dance or you know, tell a funny story or a joke, uh, come and, and, and show off your talents and let's see how talented we are here at Tree of Life. So nice fellowship outing uh, here. Saturday, March 5th, potluck lunch and talent show to follow. And then the only other thing in the announcements in the week ahead is the uh, wings and the word we will not be meeting uh, tomorrow night, just this week. But. Other than that, I hope to see you later on this week at a Bible study, or uh, if not before. Blessings on your week, and we'll see you then. Thank you.